Welcome back. We have arrived at Beta Miamit and have located the um, USS Masada, which apparently was not reporting in. Now, um, we could try and hail them, I guess. See what's going on with them. Hailing the ship, Captain. Greetings, Federation Imperialists. I am Elasi Seren, and I have claimed this ship as a blow for freedom against Federation tyranny. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. You are illegally in possession of Starfleet property. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Listen, Elasi. Hand over the ship and hostages now, or things are going to get very nasty. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Mr. Elasi, it appears that you have found something the Starfleet lost. I kind of like that one. Good, Captain. You have a sense of humor. That will make this much easier. Ah, the infamous Captain Kirk. The Masada is mine. You will release 25 political prisoners I specify, or I will destroy the ship and its crew. The list of those wrongfully imprisoned should be coming over to you now. Data file captured, Captain. Computer indicates they were all convicted of piracy with various counts of murder and mayhem thrown in. Freeing the prisoners you requested will take time. We have to track down their current locations, and Starfleet will have to grant permission to move them here. I will get that started. You should tender a show of good faith on your part. Will you beam over so we, we can work together on this, Elasi? How about beaming some of the hostages over as a show of good faith? Freeing the prisoners you requested will take time. We have to track down their current locations, and Starfleet will have to grant permission to Sorry, move Sorry, I, I hit the wrong button there. I will there. get that started. You should tender a show of good faith on your part. Will you beam over so we can discuss negotiations face to face? We can uh, work together this on one. this, Lassie. How about beaming some of the hostages over as a show of good faith? What? Lower my shield so you can beam over a war party? I'm not stupid, Captain. We'll play by my rules. So long as the shields are up, Captain, our hands are tied. The Enterprise can overpower the Masada and Taker, but the pirates would have all the time they need to kill every one of the hostages. Will you send over data on the whereabouts and conditions of my falsely accused clansmen languishing in your dungeons, Captain? Very well, we'll do it your way. I will put together the data packet. Kirk out. Your fellow Alassi have been tried in Federation courts of law and found guilty of their crimes. We'll listen to your complaints if you discuss them reasonably. Forget it, Alassi Sarath. You'll be the next one languishing on a Federation penal planet unless you drop your shields and surrender to me immediately. Very well, we'll do it your way. I will put together the data packet. Kirk out. I don't think he's going to listen to reason, so... Let's do this and see if we can figure out a way to get on board that ship. As Mr. Scott said, we cannot beam over un uh, as long as their shields are up. And we can't attack them because, you know, that would uh, end badly for the hostages. Maybe there's something else we can do, though. Captain, we could use the command prefix code to lower the Masada's shields briefly, long enough for one transporter burst. Indeed, as uh, we've seen, at least in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, where Kirk used this trick against the Reliant, which was commandeered by Khan. I'm not sure if this was ever used elsewhere in the series, I don't remember. We can basically send the security code to um, the Masada, allowing the Enterprise to give uh, to control its systems, and that means we could lower the shields. Of course, we need to know the uh, the code, and for that, we need to use the computer. Actually, let's uh, look up a few things related to this mission as well while we're at it. Let's look up this place first, actually, by Beta Myamid. Beta Myamid. A Federation world. A supply depot orbiting Beta Myamid 8 has recently been subject to attacks from Alasi pirates on two occasions within the last solar year. Who are these Alasi that we keep hearing about? Elasi, gone. A binary star system which one inhabited planet 
Manalvagorn is currently undergoing a revolution between factions which survive from raiding Federation ships and factions that wish to make peace with the Federation. Several continents were colonized centuries ago by the Andorian. The self-determination of the Manalvagorians and the treatment of minority Andorians is an issue of considerable controversy. The Alasi clan is the largest clan of pirates and have been blamed for 46 attacks on Federation ships in the last three years. They use revolutionary zeal to mask their activities as pirates. Starfleet tactical analysis characterize them as being daring and impulsive, but skilled in analysis and planning. In effect, they are very capable of acting in an unorthodox and surprising manner when their plans begin to fall apart. They are considered a class one threat to the Federation. They don't sound very nice. When this happens, it means that there's multiple uh, things that matched your search. So let's see what else we got. Alasi pirates. There are several bands of pirates based from Alasi Prime, the Ajalasi family, the Ajthuri, and the Ambrasili. Recent events on Manalbagor have caused these bands, which typically battle each other, to unite and prey on Federation ships. Again, not a good thing. Ajalasi, meaning the Fist of Ilasi, a name taken by the Demiri pirate clan of Renalmagor, and used as their surname for nearly 70 years. Okay. Um, I don't think the Alasi ever showed up in the show. They may have been made up for the game. Kind of like the Chodak in uh, Final Unity. But they definitely don't seem like the kind of people that we want to commandeer a Federation starship. And based on what Uhura was telling us about those prisoners, we probably do not want to release them. Um, let's also... Um, well, let's look up the Masada, because we need that code. Masada. U.S.S. A Federation Tug Tender Registry NCC 293391 Currently under the command of Captain Kevin Keeler Crew complement of 17 Primary mission Tow repair of disabled ships Its input override code is 293391-1 736-3829 I hope you wrote that down, because yeah, you're gonna need it. You can, um, if you need more time for that, you can, uh, in the options, specify that you do not want text boxes to be dismissed automatically. In that case, after the speech finishes, you still have to hit the button to, uh, to get him to go away, which gives you a little bit more time to copy that. Or, you know, nowadays you can just take a picture of the screen with your cell phone. Which is how I take notes <laughs> nowadays. Um, let's look up the captain of the Masada, Keeler. Keeler, Kevin, captain of the USS Masada, a Federation tug tender. Graduated 87th in his class at Starfleet Academy. Stardate 3342.8. Keeler has the rank of lieutenant in Starfleet, but is the senior officer aboard the Masada. Not a very important ship, I guess, if it only has a lieutenant serving as its uh, commanding officer. Can we look up this particular Elasi, actually? His name was Sereth. Sereth. Yes, we can. Own name, Sereth Ajalasi. A member of the notorious Elasi clan from Menalvagor in the Elasi Prime system. Sereth is one of the younger members of the clan and spent three years in the Federation detention compound on Beta Carina 6 for assault on an Andorian official administering a supply depot on Menalvagor. Like his brothers and father, he is daring and impulsive, but a completist when planning activities. He is highly charismatic but possesses nothing in the way of skills for commanding any sort of military craft, starship. Okay, so... I guess if we were to have to fight him, we would have the advantage there. 
But let's um, try to send over the... Uh, Um, the uh, prefix code and lower the shields so we can beam over. And yeah, we got a choice now. You can either heal the Masada or send the prefix code, which is what we want to do. And yeah, you have to type it in, like I said. Fortunately, I have it here. 293391. Oh, what am I doing? Dash. 19. Seven seven three six. That code had no effect, Captain. Oh, I guess it didn't like me using that dash. All right, two nine three three nine one one nine seven seven three six and three eight. To nine. Sending prefix and lowering the Masada shields. All right, so now we can beam over and hopefully rescue the hostages. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the car. All right, we beamed over to the uh, Masada's transporter room and. It's not looking too good. Let's see. There's a guy over here. Let's hope he's alive. This man was obviously the transporter engineer. He is unconscious, but alive. That's good. Let's see if we can do anything for him. He's not hurt badly. I can revive him. Good, let's try that. Maybe he can tell us about what's going on. Thank you, Doctor. Be careful, Captain. The Alassie like to set booby traps. If you need any equipment, I've got my tools in this workspace. Okay. There might be booby traps. That is um, good to know. And we got some tools. The transporter bay has been damaged in a recent firefight. Yeah, the transporter bay itself is in a lot worse shape than uh, the officer in charge. Crewman Simpson. Oh, is he uh, a relative? The transporter bay. What's this thing? A runcinate transmogrifier, an engineering tool used in the maintenance of transporters which can be fitted with bits having a variety of irregularly serrated surfaces. Yeah, that sounds like a real thing. A small bomb appears to have damaged the transporter controls. That would be a problem if we need the transporter for any reason. These doors have been scarred by phaser fire. There was a battle here. Indeed there was. James T. Kirk cautiously watches the area. Lieutenant Christensen stands ready. Yes, we have a new red shirt because, as you saw, Ensign Everts can die in the first mission. So if he did, you would need a new one here. So yeah, you always get a new one every mission. McCoy wonders how many patients he'll have on this mission. Probably quite a few. If we can rescue them. Spock quietly analyzes the damaged areas of this transporter room. Get what you can from this area. Let's get moving. Captain, a thorough analysis is required. Okay, but let's not stay too long in one place. This is just like their raid on Damocles Station. Hard, fast, and dirty. That's what she said. Well, Jim, there's one thing I can tell you. I don't like Colossi. I can't see them winning any popularity contests, Bones. They can forget about my vote. When this operation is complete, Captain, we should have Mr. Scott or Transporter Chief Kyle come here to assist with the repairs. Let's not look too far ahead, Mr. Spock. Yeah, let's focus on actually, you know, rescuing the hostages first. I suppose I should be grateful to see anyone after that. 
I thought I was dead. Well, with any luck, you won't have to worry about that for quite some time. Provided the Alassie don't have anything to say about it. Um, way to inspire confidence, Gert. I am registering energy residue from phaser fire and phaser grenade detonations. There are readings of another energy weapon, but the type is unknown. Nothing to report, Captain. No interesting things about the tool? Even our most efficient chief engineer, Scott, would have trouble repairing this damage in less than two days. Well, I don't think we have that long. Nothing to report, Captain. Let's get this tool. It might help us with something. Um... Can you actually tricorder this thing? No, you can't. We can look at it. The Runsonate Transmogrifier. This device was invented by an engineer with a sense of humor about names. With the proper attachments, engineers use it for temporary fixes on key circuits. Okay, that explains the ridiculous name, I guess. A temporary fix would be helpful if we need to uh, bring the transporter online, because as Spock said, Repairing it properly would take way too long. However, without proper attachments, I don't think um, that is going to uh, to function. Let's see what Spock can make of this anyway. The controls have been virtually destroyed, Captain. Can they be repaired, Spock? With Chief Engineer Scott's assistance, I believe we could get them in perfect working order in two days. Spock, we don't have two days. If we can repair the transporter, we might be able to transport onto the bridge and capture the Alassi. I can attempt to jury rig repairs if I can find parts. However, there is only a 67.357% probability of success. I've always been a gambler, Spock. Figure out what you'll need. You know, if I ever met a Vulcan... Spock or any Vulcan, and they gave me those kinds of odds, I'm going to quiz them on exactly how they calculated the odds for this situation to five significant dis uh, digits. Because it seems extremely improbable to me that they, that, that is even possible. I'm pretty sure they just do it to sound smart. Just make numbers up. See if we can do anything with this thing. Captain, I need to find a bit that will fit into the transmogrifier before I can go further with this. Okay, I guess not. So let's check out the rest of the ship. It's a hallway with a bunch of Debris on the floors. You are in a typical starship corridor. This view screen communication terminal has been damaged beyond repair. Let's hope we won't need it then. Some kind of force field appears to cover the door. That could be a problem. According to the deck plans of this class of starship, this is the entrance to the ship's brig. Interesting. A tangle of mangled equipment reduced to junk. There are the remains of five phasers without power packs, a drained phaser welder, and scraps of wire and uncertain bits of metal junk. Okay, sounds like that might be uh, interesting to get. Can we try quarter it? Five phasers without power packs, a drained phaser welder, insulation and bits of wire, and droplets of cooled molten metal. All right, let's get it. Twisted debris has been scattered along the side of the corridor. You fail to obtain anything. Nothing useful there, I guess. You fail to obtain any. Nothing to report, Captain. Strong electromagnetic readings come from the doorway at the far end of the hallway. A force field of unusual configurations has been erected in front of the doorway, which leads into the bridge. 
I don't think it would be healthy to approach too closely, Captain. That sounds like a challenge. Save new game. Replace pre Can I even approach too closely? What if I try to use the door? There is nothing at the moment. Nope. You fail to obtain. Well, that's no fun. Tricorder readings indicate an indeterminate number of people in the brig. At least two are armed with phasers. I recommend caution when entering. That sounds like a good idea. Spock is analyzing the surroundings. Lieutenant Christensen is carefully watching the hallway. Maybe he can do better than our previous ensign. McCoy is fidgeting around. You are James Tiberius Kirk, captain of the USS Enterprise. No, I'm not. He is. I wish I was. I don't think we can bring down that force field, Captain. If we could, though, it might be less risky than trying to transport onto the bridge. Something to keep in mind? This corridor provides access to the transporter room, Captain. It is secure. Can't say I like the decor. This is a mess now, isn't it? My daddy would have sent me to bed without supper if I'd done something like this. Um, let's take a look at what we uh, picked up from the floor, actually. We got some bits of metal. Some scraps of metal found in the corridors of the Masada. We got some wiring. Some scraps of wire found in the corridors of the Masada. This thing? A phaser welder. It is without power. These weapons are powerless, having been shorn of their power packs. That's not very useful. Trying to see if I can tricorder anything. Nope. Can we recharge these phasers? Nope. I do think we can charge the uh, phaser welder. Phaser welder is now charged. So that's uh, might be useful. And I think you can try to use the phaser welder on some of the stuff we have. The wire scraps are too small. They melt instead of fusing together, and you're left with nothing. Well, let's hope those weren't important. How about the metal bits? I think that does it. A comb bit for the transmogrifier. Now I can continue repairs on the transporter controls. Yeah, that was random. We made a bit for the transmogrifier with uh, the welder. I think we can. Oh, I think we can insert that now. The parts fit together satisfactorily. That means we can continue repairs on the transporter, but uh, I want to check out the room on the right here first. And uh, save I'm gonna save game. before I do that. Replace previous. And it's a lot hey, of what are you doing here? Just want to show you what happens. Oh, they're bad shots. Oh, it looks like they just stunned. Uh... Well, they're nice. At least they're just stunning you. Wow, they are You've really been taken captive by Alasi Sereth, and you know Starfleet does not negotiate with terrorists. As you look forward to a long captivity, you wonder who will take over command of the Enterprise. Better luck next time. Load a previously saved game. Yeah, they gave you uh, plenty of opportunity to uh, to shoot back at them. And they only stun you, which is nice. Plus, when you tricorded a door, you knew they were going to be there. So yeah, let's go in. And actually... Uh, phaser to them. Hey, what are you doing here? Uh, 
You can, of course, also choose to kill them. With the Klingons, it doesn't make any difference because they're not real. But here, I think it does affect your commendation uh, score at the end. Not 100% sure. If you only stun them, they will be back on their feet every time you come back into this room. So that's something to be aware of. This guard is stunned. This guard is stunned. They will not get up while you're in here, though, so you don't need to worry about that. You are in the brig of the Masada. Nine of the crew members are held in the cell. Two Alasi guards lie on the floor. You are in the brig of the Masada. Oh. No um, particular message for the uh, people in the brig. Um, that looks suspicious. A bomb located just inside the force field. Well, they did tell us to be wary of booby traps. This appears to be the button that turns the brig force field on and off. These wires look like a modification of some sort. Interesting. Are they not supposed to be there? Maybe they go to the bomb. Kirk seems concerned by what he sees in this room. Makes sense. Spock raises an eyebrow. Lieutenant Christensen is fumbling for his phaser. McCoy is looking at the guards. Yeah, he was again useless. Why do we even have these people? They've turned this freighter into a prison barge. I see that the Alassi live up to their reputation, Captain. Indeed, they do. I'm just a security officer, sir. They're not a very good one. I don't like the looks of this, Jim. No, it does not look good. We need to get them out of the uh, brig and preferably do it without blowing them up. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report, Captain. Okay. A medium strength phaser bomb. The brig force field would contain the explosion, but it would kill the crew members within the cell. I recommend that we find a way of disarming it, Captain. Captain, the switch has been booby-trapped to detonate a bomb, presumably inside the brig somewhere. Captain, the switch has been booby-trapped. Can we do anything for the guards? The pirates won't wait for a while, but they're going to be quite unhappy when they do. I recommend that we not be here when they awake. Good advice. You know what? I don't think that bomb is uh, that bad. Save new game. Replace. Let's just try and open the cell. You've set off some type of booby trap. The force field protected you from the blast, but everyone inside the brig is dead. Yeah. This happened to me while um, I was preparing, so of course I had to play this one multiple times, because actually getting full score here is not all that obvious. One of the reasons why I don't like doing a blind let's plays, because <laughs> I would have like missed a lot here. Um, at least the first time around. And seeing me do the same thing over and over probably wouldn't be interesting. It is kind of uh, non-obvious how you're supposed to deal with this. So you'd think, oh, it's those wires, so we need to get those. You've set off nope. Some type of booby that doesn't work. And that might lead you to... Uh, believe that you need to find some other, more clever solution to accomplish that. But that's not true either. Getting the wires is actually the right thing to do. It's just that Spock needs to do it. There. I believe the bomb is now defused, Captain. Captain, this wiring may prove useful in repairing the transporter. Okay. So, now we can get the wires. And, of course, open the cell. Oh. 
Thank you for freeing us, Captain. We'll secure the area so they don't come up behind you. We've had electrical problems with our door to our bridge, Captain. The Alassie don't know we put an electric shutdown device. You'd never find it by chance. But if you used a charged phaser welder two feet to the left of the door and one foot off the ground, you might be able to shut down the force field and get a jump on the Alassie. Okay, that gives us a way past the force field. That is useful to know, and we saved all the hostages, which is also good. Well, I guess, you know, they could still, like, overpower us again. We still need to take care of the Elasi that are presumably on the bridge. Thank you for freeing us. You better take the bridge before they suspect anything is up. Uh, you, you'd better hurry up, or they'll catch on, sir. Okay, okay. All right already. If um, we heard correctly, it should be possible for us to use the phaser welder to get through this force field. And yeah, you can't just use it anywhere. The field is absorbing the energy. You have to use it in the spot that um, uh, that the the crewman told us about, which is about here, I think. The field is absorbing. No, it's not. The field is absorbing. The field is absorbing the energy. Oh, help. Helpful, helpful, helpful. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. I forget where exactly this is. Ah, there it is. That did it. The field is deactivated, Captain. Now, um, we've heard people talk about going through the door versus transporting, and they kind of seem to say that going through the door is better. But if you want full score, you have to use the transporter. I think you also have to disable the force field, but not actually go through the door. Which is kind of weird. So we disabled the force field. However, we're not going to go that way. We are going to use the transporter. So let's head back there. And we'll see if Spock can repair the transporter in the next video. 